Hi guys, Cam back here at the, uh, the battling workshop, or the battler workshop, and oh, geez, the battle sometimes, isn't it? Um, I've done a couple of videos, um, parts one and two, on a particular tool that I made, going back 12 months, 18 months ago. Uh, and it was a tool that actually, I guess you could say, um, saved the workshop. Uh, I wouldn't be standing here the way I am now if I didn't have this particular tool. So it was a tool that I designed and manufactured, and it's a, a bell mounting tool, or, or they're known in the trade as an under reaming tool. It's a hand operated uh, unit. Um, it's designed to um, bell mouth open the base of piles to uh, increase the bearing loads that can be applied on those piles. Um, as you would have seen in previous videos, I sunk a whole series of uh, cores through the concrete slab, uh, 27 or 29, maybe up to 30, and, uh, and bored down um, approximately two metres and then uh, put a, a, a bell mouthing tool down inside to uh, open the, uh, the base up to around about half a metre. So these two videos uh, are specifically on that particular build, parts one and parts two. Um, as you also know, I had the same issue with my house when uh, when it uh, it cracked in half and uh, and sunk at the back end. It, uh, it sunk down uh, two to three inches, and uh, once again that was a, a major structural job to lift that uh, that slab up and uh, and get that stabilised again. And once again, I did that on my own, and, and each time I had a geotech report done to look at uh, what the substructure was under the ground. So I knew exactly how deep I had to go and what the bearing loads were so I could uh, determine how big that bell mounting tool had to be. The house was a bit different. I, I put piles down that were about 800 millimetres square, down about uh, 1.5 metres, and that was 12 years ago now, and uh, and the house hasn't moved. So I'm very happy with that. Matter of fact, you, you wouldn't even pick um, where it actually uh, where it actually broken away. You, know, you have to look very, very hard to see it. Um, so uh, sit back and enjoy it. And, uh, See what you think. Um, a big shout out to Emma too. She sent me a couple of um, stickers for Emma's spare room. Uh, Emma's currently running the um, uh, tool competition uh, through her channel. So I'm gonna have a go at that. Um, pop into Emma's spare room and have a look at what she does. It's, uh, it's fantastic. So uh, thank you Emma for putting that on again. And uh, yes, I will have an entry in. I've just worked out what I'm going to do. So <laughs> we'll get that underway. All right guys, um, we'll catch you soon. Cheers. Okay, so um, that's the modelling of the uh, of the bell mounting tool I've got. Um, you can see here it's in the uh, retracted position, and here it's in the extended or open position where it's actually going to complete the, the bell mounting. So um, I have a bit of um, one inch shed forty pipe that I'm going to attach onto this this uh, spigot here, uh, and that will be uh, the the length of what the uh, the depth of the um, the cord hole is and uh, that's what I'll be doing the rotationary motion and also the expanding motion of the blades and uh, with this uh, I want to get around about a 470 mil diameter undercut which will give me a good very very good bearing surface to come onto so I've done a number of detail sheets that's the DXF files that I did, that's just the drawing of the DXF files that I gave to the, the laser cutter and just the details of the components. So if I get a website up and going fairly soon, I'll, I'll throw them up there so that um, you can have access to them if you ever want to make something like this, provided it's going to work. Hopefully it will. Uh, as with everything, when it's one-offs, um, there's always uh, those little sections that you've got to nip and tuck to make things work. So. Hopefully we'll get 95% of it right and uh, and we'll go. Alright guys, the, uh, the first job we're going to kick off with today is um, making up the slides. These are going to be um, welded into that uh, 6 inch diameter pipe and they're going to act as the, uh, the main guides if you like for the, uh, for the pin and the blades to uh, actuate up and down on. So just using a bit of uh, stock 50 by 25 flat so always handy if you can design things around at home around standard flat sections uh, it makes life an awful lot easier so we haven't got a lot to take off this i've done my drawing 23 thick 48 wide but i'm just going to try and take the minimum amount off on each side so it may end up being a little bit thicker than than, um, than 23 then we'll uh, we'll trim it back to the length with uh, with an airmill, 
and we'll slot out our uh, tape and then I'm not going to worry about that for, uh, for this particular job. If it was a, a more precision job I'd certainly be uh, working again that zero zero but um, for what we're doing here that's going to be fine. All right we'll take the rags off that and we'll, uh, we'll clean the ends up. All right guys just clean the ends up um, on those slides. Um, I've got a nominal 180 millimeter long. I'm going to make these slightly longer. I've got a little bit more left on the meat. Just means I get a little bit more meat down the bottom when I cut these uh, slides out. I guess one of the beauties of doing your own design and making stuff yourself is that you can uh, do the slight mods along the way. So it's 182.6, so let's, let's go for 182 rather than, uh, than 180. So I'll take 0.6. Right so what I'll do is I'll machine up its, uh, its partner and uh, I'll flick it back on when we're starting to, to cut the grooves out. As I mentioned, um, I do this design myself, so I give myself a fair bit of flexibility in the shop because I know what I can and what I can't get away with. As I mentioned, when you do see drawings commercially, and if you're machining to those drawings, and um, don't be afraid to challenge the designer about why he's done things. Um, I've seen some designs where tolerance is put on, on non-working dimensions, and they're a pain to try and hold and try and get to. So ask the question. Get to know the guy who's done the designing. Sometimes he may not want to get to know you. Uh, I know a lot of designers are, are frightened to go into, into workshops or, or deal with the people manufacturing. That's their job. I don't want to know about it. But um, if you're a machinist or you're quoting on this job, don't be afraid to, to challenge the designer and engineer as to why he's doing certain things and maybe offer solutions or other ways of doing the job. That's, uh, that's always a nice heads up too. It gives yourself a little bit of goodwill. It shows the designer or the engineer that you're looking at the drawing, you're getting it in your head, and you're working through your methodologies. So uh, that's always a good sign. Uh, it makes me feel confident if I know I've got a machine that's doing that for me. But uh, yeah. All right, we'll, uh, we'll machine it to partner up and then we'll. Uh,
let's get that. That hog down. About half a millimetre to go in the depth. And uh, we'll have three and a half each side on the width. I may even drop that width down slightly. I have left a millimetre um, of clearance on the pin when it goes in there, but I might drop that back to half a millimetre clearance. We'll see how that goes. I can always just turn the pin back slightly if I need to. <laughs> Guys, we're back here again. Um, apologise for that. Batteries out of oh, the cameras out of batteries again. I've made a modification to this. It's only a small modification. Um, rather than having a spigot on this drive here, I've um, decided I'll bore into that and fit the uh, the pipe down into that uh, into that hole instead. Um, the shear area almost doubles and. Uh, it's going to be a lot more resistant to torsion with the um, stress now on the outer fibres of that member rather than being uh, on the round as it was before. So I've updated the details as you can see there. Um, previously when my batteries ran out of my camera we were sort of in the machine, middle of machining these, uh, these guides I guess. You can see them sort of sitting down in place there. I'll, I'll just try and get one off. It's going to drop I'm sure. So, in the joint time I've also machined up the pin and on the blades I've machined up the bushes and they're used to press fit into the blades at this stage and once everything's done I'll weld them in permanently but let's get one of these guides out because I had some issues and when I was machining these and it's something that's happened to me before is that um, when I hit a fair bit of vibration particularly coming into the corners just here um, the cutter does vibrate uh, what it does, it tends to pull it out of the ER collets and that is an issue with ER collets. So it actually dropped down with all the smoke from the coolant and the chips flying everywhere. I didn't realise that it actually cut into uh, a lot deeper than what I was hoping for. So what I've done is I've actually made the slot a lot deeper, which doesn't worry me. It just means that that pin's going to engage into it a little bit deeper. So um, there's still a little tiny step there, maybe about a quarter of a mil. Uh, where it hasn't cleaned up but once again that's not going to worry me so i've made i've made both of them the same so the job for today is we're going to machine up that uh, pivot spigot so there's the stock there i'm going to use for it so um it's got a length there of 175 but i'll make that as long as i can all right guys so what i'm going to do is just clean this up Drawing state's 49 square, but if it comes in less than that, that's fine. Just make sure that when we machine everything, it's central to the uh, to the square itself. So it cleans that bit of rusty old stuff, stuff I've had lying around for a long time out in my backyard. So let's just put some juice on and get things going. Bridgeports are wonderful machines, very, very universal. You do an awful lot with them, but um, one of the big drawbacks on those things is the rigidity of the head. So you've got to be careful of the depth of cuts that you do take. You can take a swag off, but the machine tends to vibrate like crazy at times when you try and take too much out. So, what they are for a home workshop um, and what you can do with them 
is uh, unbelievable to say. And sometimes you wish you did have a fixed vertical head machine. Real big rigid like a Cincinnati or a Milwaukee, but uh, as it is, mate. Uh, guys, this... Uh, Should be pretty square. All right, guys, we're back just cleaning up the uh, the ends on this. And I'm just going to make it with this cutter, I reckon. Just I've taken a, a cut and a spring cut. I've got to look through now. I think there's not going to rub it too much. In that break, I'm going to put the spring cut in. to um, put this back in the vise and give it a lick again because uh, it wasn't square there was a had a bit of swarf that was uh, underneath the parallel would kick it so I had to put it in again and, uh, and do two more cuts to get that square up but uh, as I said that's within 0.02 of a normal square now so I'm happy with that all right we've cleaned up the ends on that and they've come up they've come up pretty good so I'm happy with that um, Length doesn't matter, as I said, all it's going to make is a bit more engagement with our, uh, our drive tube that's going to fit down inside there, and I'll just re-space out the, um, the locking bolts or locking studs for that, which is an issue. We'll, um, we'll head on over to the lathe now, um, set this up in the fore jaw, and we'll start doing the boring and that in there for the uh, for that uh, for that torque tube we've got to put down. We'll put it back in here then, cross drill, and we'll also do the bore for the... Um, the main pivot pin for this. So. All right, we'll leave this set up and we'll head over to the lathe for a bit of a stint. All right, I've got this set up in the forge jaw chuck. Got some aluminium packing underneath there just to protect that surface. The first thing I'm going to do is just ensure that this is um, square or parallel. Um, I have to use my mirror here. I'm going to my face. That's within one thou. I don't know if I'm a hundred thou out or that's bang on. Uh, well, you wouldn't credit it, but I've just put that. I'll put that square up a bit more, but that's me. That's, uh, I might just get a square and we'll sit that across there and square that edge up, but that already looks like it's. <laughs> Hello guys, we're back again. Uh, we finished drilling that hole at uh, 30, um, 30 millimeter. That came out at around about uh, 30.2. So we need to open that out to around about 34 to fit that up inside, which is going to be our roughly three meter long torque bar that we're going to use to drive this uh, bell mouthing tool with so I'll uh, start that boring off now got a nice long boring bar but be careful quite a few spring cuts got a bit of overhang on this so we'll just take it easy and see how we go Right, guys, we've uh, we pulled this out a fair way, so just going to do a bit of a check on it and see where it's sitting at the moment. It's getting close. Now, I'm not using a micrometer for this, I'm just using the calipers for what this is to get a bit of pipe to fit up inside. Yeah, uh, 
Okay, you can see how that swarf's built up on that tool, and what that actually does, it tends to push the bar away, which reduces your, your actual diameter of cut. So um, that was packed in there very tight, so my assumption is going to be that that's not going to be parallel. It's going to bind up a little bit um, as I poke that uh, little test bar down inside. But let's just have a look at it and see. fit in there so I'm happy with that. I'll leave it at that. Alright so we've got this set up. I've put a um, one of my uh, senders into here just to support that tail end a little bit while I'm cutting the chamfer on so we'll see how we go. It's got a couple of cuts and it seems to be alright. <laughs> pivot pin so that's measured up at uh, 0.08 over 26 millimeters so we'll give that a little bit of clearance a little bit of a sloppy fit just so that there's no way that's going to bind up when I've got there in action so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'll find the center when it comes to Show these tape, these straight shank jobs. I'm doing one done. Once again, those are a very cheap set, and uh, straight out of the box they wouldn't cut either. You need to uh, grind the reliefs and the angles roll up the creek as well. I haven't got that angle spot on yet, as you notice. There was one flute working harder than the other with the swarf coming out, but what I, for what I do, it's fine. If I need anything more accurate, I'll go and regrind them and uh, spend a bit more care with them. All right, well, we'll set up with the uh, with the boring head. So, all right, guys, so we've got the boring head set up in there at the moment. This is my little boring and facing head. Very universal piece of kit. Like a lot of us, I have the standard boring heads, but I'm using this for a specific job. Cut. I'll cut 
close to the last, 0.35 of a mill, so not bad. 0.35. Just doing that just takes those little high spots off the all the roughness of the machining. And that's now a reasonably close sliding fit, so a lot of stuff in it, but that'll do the job nicely. Yep, same both ways, so that pin's pretty spot on for parallel. Right, well, we'll deburr that and uh, we'll sink a couple of um, 10mm holes down there that we can use to lock off the, uh, the torque pipe and uh, have that finished. Hi guys, back to this little job again. It's been two weeks since I last looked at this one. Uh, had some work come into the workshop that uh, needed to be done urgently so that's all been um, packaged and posted off yesterday so we can now start getting back into sorting out this bell mouthing tool. Now as you can see You'll probably see that the blades don't fit down in the shell. So I'm going to have to take a little bit off these corners just here, just to allow that to drop down. And the other thing I've noticed is that this top skirt that was going to be welded around the top uh, to give it a little bit of stiffness um, isn't going to allow the blades to drop down so that's a little bit too thick there so what I'm going to have to do is actually cut these separately do away with these pieces and then weld these on and just leave that free to allow the blades to drop down so what I'll do first I think is we'll just do the little modifications on these blades so that they can they can do what they're supposed to do then we'll start looking at um, doing the cutouts um, on this uh, 6 inch shed 40 pipe so that we can start getting this thing together because I really need to get this moving I'm sick of looking at the workshop going down like the Titanic alright guys so uh, I'll get into that stuff first and uh, I'll see you back soon alright guys we've got this sitting down quite nicely now what I've done is I've just taken some nice oh gosh if I can turn it around some nice radiuses and bevels on those corners there so a little bit off the tops of those as well if they had been bent another half a degree it would have been um, no issues popping that down but uh, anyway we've cleaned that up they sit down inside the the pipe section now. Like so. And the idea of that is obviously to be able to assemble it, but more importantly there's any issues, I can easily get them out and uh, fix up any bent shafts or any of the, the bent blades as I go through this uh, this um, bell mouthing procedure. Alright guys, we've set this up on my um, yeah, wonky surface plate I guess you call it. It's, uh, it's laying it down at a fair old angle. Not the most comfortable thing to work on with that in the back of your mind. But anyway, hopefully I'll have that all rectified soon. Um, got this bit of um, 6 inch head 40 pipe sitting up on some, uh, some V blocks. I've just put some bluing down. Um, I've just touched off on the top of the uh, of the pipe and come down half the distance 168.5 so I've come down to about 84.25 and uh, we will mark those off B 
best as we can. And I'll also run that scribe line right down the side as well. Get all the junk out of the way. I'll tell you what, it's, uh, it's very cold outside. We're sort of in the middle of our winter at the moment. It's blowing a gale outside. I don't know if you can hear that. Very, very cold. We've got the pot belly going. So it's warmed things up quite nicely in here. And I don't reckon there's anything better than a weekend afternoon. Playing in the shoe when it's so cold outside. And we've got the pot belly going. I've even got fed Divna on the DVD and the little room next door, so I sort of listen to that in the background while we're working. Right, so we've marked that reasonably well. What I need to do now is get 90 degrees around. And what I'm going to do is rotate that around, and I'm going to use the stand here as a square. Get this squared up and what this does, it gives us at least some accurate starting points to mark out that mouth of that window that I need to cut out and also accurate points to set the slide lines up to. I know, so we should have four lines now pretty close to 90 degrees to each other. So um, what I'll do next is I'll mark out the slides, get the centre on the slides and I can clamp them into place sit this pipe up with a square inside and get them squared up and clamped off and then we can get them tacked into place once I know they're set and they're right we can start marking out our mouth and um, getting that cut out and whether I do that just with a grinder and cut it out or whether I set it up in a milling machine and just give it a lick around the periphery we'll see how things are going alright guys we've finished the marking out a couple of things I've done is I've put some witness marks down on my line work. This line work isn't going to last, so you always want to have something that you can come back to. So, putting some witness marks with a center punch all around uh, it makes it a lot easier to find later on down the track. Uh, what I've also done is I've gone in just with a flapper wheel inside the barrel and I've cleaned all the rust out just to make life a little bit easier for us to, uh, to weld, try and get rid of as many, many impurities as we can. So what I've done is um, I've lined up with a ruler right across the witness marks of the uh, slideways and the centre lines of our pipework. I've got the tops as level as I can and I've just used my, it's just a B grade uh, square, 16 square just to go around and I'm really happy with the squareness of those. They're pretty spot on. So for what this is, um, that's going to be fine. So now that we've got them in position, I'll whack some other clamps on here just to make sure we stabilise it up properly. We'll fire up the little welder and we'll get some, some spot marks put around.